This compost is probably going to take another couple of weeks to be done, but I have some random pieces of junk. There's a pallet. There's two buckets of kitchen scraps that need to be made into compost. Here's some corrugated metal and some other pieces. I bet we could build something with all these. We were watching Jeff Lawton's permaculture soils. Now we, we've seen this before. We watched it quite a long time ago, like a long while back when I was much more of a novice gardener. And it didn't, it didn't strike me at the time because I didn't know anything about anything, uh, how, how shocking some of Jeff Lawton's claims on uh, compost were. Uh, and now when we were watching it again the other night, we, we were scratching our heads and turning our heads sideways and saying, wow, he's making compost in 18 days? Wow, he claims to not be losing any mass? I mean, that's, that's quite surprising. I mean, anybody who's tried to make compost before knows you go from like that much mass to, to that much mass, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of... I mean, it's sort of disappointing, really. You think, I'm gonna have this great amount of compost, and it's like you can never make enough compost. Anyhow, it was, I'm not questioning Jeff Lawton if he says he can do it. I mean, he, he's got it all, he's got a system, right? He's got it all laid out, and he tells you exactly how to do it, and he says he doesn't lose, hard, he hardly loses any mass, and he's doing it in 14 days. Um, but, so it was very intriguing, like, okay, well, this would be worth trying. It's worth experimenting with to see if, wow, can we actually do that? I don't know if we're gonna follow it to a T, but uh, I don't know, are we gonna follow it to a T? No. No, I don't, I don't think Because we don't have interns. I don't think we're capable of following it to a T. Would you like to come be our intern? You can turn compost. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can tell you right now what you'll be doing. <laughs> Look at that, we just made a compost pile there. A, co a compost enclosure in, in, in what, 15, 20 seconds. Yeah. While I prattled on. So, Looks good. It does. Looks um, farm-like. Not better homes and gardens, definitely. Perfect, it's like I planned it. Quite the angle on this one. Let's try it right here. There we go. Yes, that's a wedge issue. This was a pile I built with the kids. Um, but it was a lot coarser material than we really should have thrown in one spot if you wanted any kind of fast compost. And it was so dry that it was both coarse and it didn't get layered well. And then I stole parts of it to throw onto the other one. And so it's not really a much of a compost pile anymore. So we're gonna dig into it and we're gonna see what it looks like underneath. And then we'll see if we can take some of this pile and 
maybe use some of the rougher stuff as the base for the new one. So I'm gonna dig it up. And we'll see what we've got. This is just a lot of yard waste. Some of this stuff, this is like, you know, two years to break down maybe. Or a year if it was if it stayed nice and wet, which it hasn't because it's been so dry and the rains have only just really started again. Let's see. Hopefully you don't uncover anything terrifying in here. You're gonna get like scorpions or centipedes, the famous eggs or whatever. Got some good decay down here in the middle. We had too much carbon in the pile. And too rough and too dry, but you can still see there's some definite decaying, rapidly decaying matter in here. But look at how, I mean, this is just too rough. This is mostly the bottom sticks we laid down for the pile that are left here, and I took best stuff already. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some decent compost actually underneath. What I really need is a proper pitchfork. It's not a spading fork too. Long, sharp tines help a lot when you're turning pile because they, they let go of the material. This actually picks it up and holds it too well. So, I don't know. Maybe underneath all this, I was hoping for a source of some good stuff to put on the new one, but I don't think we're gonna be able to use very much of this. Too rough. Just too rough. See, the fungi have been enjoying it though. They'll break it down over time. The fungi are your um, carbon decomposers, really. They get into the They'll take the lignin out of the wood and they'll digest it when the bacteria have a hard time. And they'll break down this long-term stuff, but this would be better as rough mulch in an orchard or food forest or something than as a fast compost pile for vegetables, which is what we want. This is quality construction here. Put a little of this rough stuff on the bottom so the rest of the compost pile can breathe. But we don't want too much of it. There's some air for the bottom. Well, guess what we don't have anymore? The chickens are gone. And I wrote a post on the economics of chickens and how much trouble we've had with them over the years. And I put it on Facebook, sent it to my newsletter. People absolutely freaked out with some of them. Basically it was like I was a heretic because I just said sometimes chickens aren't worth it. And uh, you'd think that I said one of my favorite breakfasts is a young puppy broiled. A broiled, delicious young puppy with a honey glaze sauce. Even if that was true, I didn't say it. And people really reacted strongly. And I think it's because a lot of people, the chickens are their pets. And for us, for a small amount of birds that we had, and the birds would get out and tear everything up. And then when we tried to breed more birds, the rats got them. And then when the birds went free ranging, they would go in the mango tree at night. And they wouldn't come home, like they just wouldn't home. We're talking like 
a week of being locked up in the coop, and then the very next night they would go up in the mango tree. I don't know what it was with that mango tree. I mean, I like mangoes, but I don't want to sleep in a mango tree. Too much. So, the chickens are gone. All that to say. And we will use this material that they have turned and manured for us in the bottom here as the next layer on the compost. This should break down really fast when it gets wet. Well, the sand flies are eating me alive, so I'm going to go inside and let David finish up the rest. It's, it's all lifting and things like that, so I usually try to pass the off this <laughs> <bunch of anyhow. laughs> Let's see ya. on a layer of kitchen scraps. Yeah! Mango season again. It's hard not to be happy in mango season. We don't have enough material right now to really finish this thing out the way it should be finished out. 
So over the next few days, I'm gonna gather materials and throw it in there, and then we'll wet the whole pile really well to get it activated and started and jumping. And between the manure and the kitchen scraps and everything that's in there, I'm talking chicken manure now, when all that gets kicking, it's gonna heat up really fast, and then we're gonna turn it about every four days, and we'll see what happens. See if we can make compost in 18 days, but I'm not gonna start the count yet because this is just not enough material to really get kicking. So I've gotta gather a little bit more material, and we'll be back to work on this again. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, check me out on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com, and may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David. David the Good We listened to Portis Head And drank Spiced Rum He threw me off the ramp And broke my foot And broke my wheelchair All in good fun All right, this is gonna take a while.